Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we are playing a Planeswalker mill deck. Yep, we're going to try to take the opponent's library from 60 to 0 as quickly as possible. It's a pretty turbo-ish mill deck, and the way that it hopefully works is that we use cards like Ashiok, Drowned Secrets, and Psychic Corrosion to flip our opponent's entire library upside down. To support us on that quest, we also have a number of Planeswalkers that both create tempo, make the opponent attack and deal with them, and buy us more time to mill, and have the advantage of being blue cards. Because Drowned Secrets only triggers when we cast a blue spell, we've cut nearly all of the white cards from the deck. Thankfully, we can do some things uh, that are very white, such as sweeping the board with Time Wipe, or playing cards like Teferi Hero of Dominaria and using their minuses, uh, either Teferi using the minus to help keep creatures away, and still get the mill trigger from Drowned Secrets. But if you're wondering why we don't have Cleansing Nova, or Settle the Wreckage, or Seal Away, it's because of Drowned Secrets. In support of these things, the opponents usually do kind of saddle up with their army and attack Teferi or attack Ashiok to try to keep from being milled. That's where Blink of an Eye comes in. We can play it to return our Ashiok or our Teferis to our hand and play them again, triggering Drowned Secrets again, and uh, again, reloading the Ashiok so that we can exile more cards from our opponent's library. Ashiok really makes the deck tick. The minus one with target player putting four cards from their library into their graveyard, then exiling the graveyard makes a big difference because if you are exiling the graveyard, they can't take advantage of all those things you're doing, such as uh, bringing back Arclight Phoenix, for example, or using Find to get the perfect creature. And other than that, we play kind of like blue-white control with chemistry's insights drawing extra cards to trigger the corrosion more, some warrant wardens to hold the opponent at bay, and when in doubt, we can make a control deck respect our planeswalkers and they have to deal with our mill cards, making for an interesting matchup. I think that's a decent enough introduction to the deck. The mana base, it, I decided up against doing flashy things like adding Blast Zone or things like that because actually the mana requirements for this deck can be pretty tough. There are a lot of turns where you want to use double blue to play Ashiok and then have a third blue to play, say, a Psychic Corrosion and still have another blue somewhere for Opt. So I wanted to go really light on my white sources and have plenty of colored mana. I didn't want to risk Blast Zone or Arch of Razka or Field of Ruin getting in the way. All right. Let's go play some fun best of one games. I don't find this to be the most competitive deck. I find it to be a fun deck. I would put it in the jank tank for sure, but it should make for some interesting viewing. Let's have a race to the bottom. For some of these jankier, um, combo-y, or just a little bit off the radar decks, I'm gonna try playing a game against Sparky in practice mode to show how the deck works. Let me know in comments if you like that. If you find this annoying, uh, please skip ahead or go to 2x speed, and who knows, maybe someday Sparky will beat me. Could be exciting. Look, I'm a planeswalker. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'm regretting my decisions already, but let me know in chat what you think of the decision. Ah, oh, Mon- Sparky on Mono Red. Dear lord, what was that sound? Oh, my computer just restarted behind me. <laughs> that was kind of terrifying. I was like, what is Sparky doing? It's like the greatest crash through ever. Field Creeper. <laughs> All right. So now to Fairy, Drown Secrets, we get out right away and we start milling. Can't wait to see what kind of deck Sparky uses. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Well, minus three the Teferi, bounce the Field Creeper and draw a card. I got this. Just about any time you get the chance to make a play like this, like this play pattern with the deck, it's typically the right thing to do, just setting the opponent back. Uh-oh. There's a Raging Goblin. Ashiok Dream Renderer shows up. Raging Goblin does not go after the, ti the, <laughs> the Time Raveler at all. I find that interesting. So with two creatures on the field, we could hold up Blink of an Eye, we could Chemistry's Insight, or we could drop the Dream Render. Mana efficiency is very important for the mill deck, so I think that the chemistry's insight this turn and the oh my god, oh. <laughs> she's like giving me the thinking emote. Even Sparky thinks I take too long. This is tilting. 
<laughs> this is way more tilting than I expected this experience to be. All right, we're definitely in a spot where we have to find our time wipes. Frickin' Sparky, you killed her. You killed Teferi. Not playing around settle the wreckage. Brilliant. So we're trying to use Chemister's Insight to find a sweeper effect in this case, rather than focusing on blink of an eye. All right, down to 16. This is where we put out Meat Shield Teferi. Meat Shield Teferi is going to plus and hope the opponent attacks Teferi instead of our face. Sparky's impressed. This isn't a fight you can win. Keep up the pace. Double Ashiok, although we still have a very long way to go. Each of these are 10 cards. Or no, each of these combined their 10 cards right now. Double Opt is a lot of cards too. Uh-oh, they're all going face. Oh, man. And we see in the graveyard there's cards like Fiery Finish. A Lava Axe, no! We could bounce to fairy. It's an option. We're not quite dead next turn. Let's get moving. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Sparky the troll. Oh my goodness. Okay. What am I doing? <laughs> I, I win. But I hope you win too. Oh shut up. Alright, I think that the play is to let the lava axe go. Now that we've seen our opponent plays this kind of burn, and to try to opt into a sweeper and keep our life total high and let Teferi die. I really should have seen that coming. Alright, come on. Can't let Sparky win. Another Ashiok is not what the doctor ordered. There's a sweeper. We've got a chance. You're telling me there's a chance. Oh my goodness, when it rains it pours. Boom, shakalaka. Yeah, she took it pretty well considering. And land go is the play. I see lava axe, I see fiery finish, but that only goes to a creature. The meteor golem's usually a one of in those intro -y decks. Sure strike is an interesting one. Weird, I swear you said that before. All right. Resolve a land. Play Ashiok. Keep milling. I wonder you. Yeah, incinerate that. Sweet. Now we could double Dream Render by like holding up the blink of an eye and saying go. Just in case our opponent starts throwing hasty stuff around. Crashing through, drawing cards. Sure. Okay. We got a 4-2 Ogre. So I could bounce that back to the hand, which isn't a very bad play at all, since it's the only play the opponent made this turn. A little bit more tempo. A little bit more Drown Secrets. Aw, Sparky, don't be so easily discouraged. You have to fight! You have to fight with honor and enthusiasm! Creepy. <laughs> my victory is about to do. You can do this. Well, now you're now you're on my side. So bizarre. All right. I don't want to pay the two life. I want to play the land. I don't want to discard it to Chemistry's Insight. So, actually, I think this is totally fine. It's important. Now you want me to take my time? What a troll. <laughs> All right. We found land anyway. So we can hit our land drop for the turn without playing a tapped hollowed fountain, hold up a kicked blink of an eye. Still have Warren Warden for a haste creature. And here we go, blink it away. Down to just 15 cards left in the deck. So one of the th reasons I wanna do these kind of things is because so many opponents scoop uh, in matchups like this that I don't get to really show how the end game looks. My dreams dissipate like smoke. OK. 
Sparky. But uh, let me know, like, be let me know honestly in comments if the Sparky game's a waste of your time. I'm not. I'm going to try to make a slightly longer video and not make it at expense of gameplay footage. so hard to talk with Ashiok just being creepy over here all the time. But I think we're gonna get there. Ashiok over Ashiok over Ashiok. It makes this. I'll return. Want to play again? You slumber. <laughs> Got him. I was scary for a minute. I was scary for a minute. I thought I was gonna lose to Ash... Lose to, uh... Sparky. On the first go round, Whew. here's a tough hand for you. Do we keep this? Um, we don't have a mill card, and without one of those, our tempo plays aren't as strong. But I'm still going to try out the hand. But with a bounce and a put on top, we're not going to be removing threats anytime soon. So we really do need to come up with some kind of a some kind of a mill card pretty quick. And we don't even have another blue mana for Ashiok, so we're gonna need a little bit of luck. Well, apparently that first turn is a difficult one. Free time walk in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Crushed it. <laughs> oh, another day in the arena, folks. Put it in comments if this has ever happened to you. Any of you ever been there? Do you ever, do you ever like, kind of in your head start manufacturing what happened to your opponent? Did a tornado come through town? Most, I, I think that anybody who, uh, I, I am not a parent but I'm of the age where my friends have children now, and you just can't get them to sit still for anything. You try to play a game of magic with them, and something happens with the kid, and they're gone. So that's usually what comes to mind for me the most, is the kid just ate some crayons or got into the tool shed and is swinging wrenches. Something like that. So it could be, it's a theory. Um, they could also pass out from sheer exhaustion. All right. Why not? I don't think it really matters what we take here. Discarded a Bond of Revival. It was all a ploy. It's a reanimator deck. It's been a reanimator deck this whole time. They just wanted to get a creature in the graveyard, but then they accidentally discarded their reanimation jutsu. That's what it is. That's what's going on here. I'm just going to go, you know, ride the lightning over here. Pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. Do it. Move, big fella. Move, stick. Get out the way. Bam, bam. Just kind of make their make their houses smoky, like their houses on fire. Whoa, whoa, whoa! There's a human. Did you see? Oh! Turn three kill. Who knew a mill deck could do it? Who knew a mill deck could get that turn three kill? This hand has a drown secrets and some ops to try to keep hitting land drops. And if we hit our land drop naturally, Teferi can set them back and we're on the play. So all things considered, looks really nice. I'm leading with the Glacial Fortress. If I draw another island, I kind of want as many I want as many blue sources on the battlefield as I can get to opt multiple times and cast multiple blue spells a turn. So I'll lead with the Glacial Fortress. Tapped and all. The planes won't cast the opt, and the Glacial Fortress won't enter untapped without the planes. Are we doing this again? Just nobody wants to play with me? Nobody wants to spar with the mill deck. I mean, I'll go rub a gargoyle's head. What's up, dude? You're my only friend today. I don't know what I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> we're, we're attracting we're attracting a certain type of opponent. 
All right, all right, it's on, it's on. Maybe they're here. I still haven't seen their hand light up. There we go. Oh, Memorial to Genus. Let's start the party. Drowned Secrets. What you got? Blue, white. Oh boy. So I could slam the Teferi or I could slam second Drowned Secrets. And it's a Turbo Mill deck, not a Turbo Teferi deck. So let's get the mill going. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We have to be a little cautious about cleansing Nova, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I want to try to opt for another land. The opponent might have Absorb here. We did just mill one. And we milled two, that's good. And we hit the land. We are cruising. All right, let's test the opponent and their counter magic because I wasn't feeling it when that opt happened. Oh yeah. I can no longer stand by and watch. Uh, actually, do I plus this? I don't, hmm. I mean, it's really tempting to straight draw the card. Hmm. Yeah, let's draw the card. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. The opponent might land Ixlon's Binding or whatever. Yep, there it is. Fortunately, Blink of an Eye is on it. Oh, we're binding the Drown Secrets. Interesting. No, I am not making this up as I go. So we can bounce this, make the opponent play it again, mill, and then double mill with Opt. Seems pretty good. Especially when the opponent has to play on their main phase and they can't hold up counter magic and they're at 39 cards So we're already making good progress So let's do it Boing Lyra down interesting blue white build from the opponent here Probably they're probably in a lot of trouble against us though and against double drown secrets that quickly this is definitely the matchup you want. You want any kind of control, slow control, or mid rangey stuff. All right, our opponent did have the Cleansing Nova. But we are going to town on their deck, that is for certain, and we have plenty of card draw to go, so I'm sure we'll find another mill effect before too long. Summary Judgment, three damage to target tapped creature. Addendum, if it was cast during your main phase, it deals five damage. Interesting. All right. Now there is an excellence binding, but we have more blink of an eyes. We definitely want to plus that card. Let's deploys the psychic corrosion. And do I opt now or later? I guess I might still draw like another drown secrets or something to play this turn. So I'll opt now. How does he do it? Now there is a chance of another cleansing Nova. Do I take that chance or do I go for it? Bold, brave, and beautiful, my friends. Are you miss are you the double cleansing Nova guy? Not yet. And the pick is Teferi. Alright. And Dawn of Hope comes down, and now, now a Cleansing Nova is almost certain not to happen. Okay. Another good draw. We can bounce this, then use the Teferi to bounce that, then the opponent plays it again. Eh, that's medium. I think it's much better to launch the Chemist's Insights and hit the opponent's deck as hard as we can. Oh yeah, keep it going. Keep it going. And pass the turn. We've got Blink of an Eye. We'll see if there's a good use for that. Dawn of Hope is going to take way too long to win from this position, but there's a Teferi. Let's see what Teferi wants to do. Let's slow this down. Drawing cards. Love it. You know what? I'm not done yet. Love it. All right. I'm actually going to wait till my opponent untaps their lands and then try to blink it so if the opponent counters it i can play my own teferi but the opponent doesn't even want any anymore they know they know the writing is on the wall they can't stop the mill train okay that's a lot of five drops and an opt but 
if the opponent's on an aggro deck, at least we have the time wipe to clean it up, and that's important. If the opponent's not on an aggro deck, we should be in a favorable matchup anyway, even though our hand is bad. So there's a lot of good things to draw to. So you'd rather have a hand that's kind of good against aggro, I think, in, in the dark, than a hand that's totally weak to it. The inherent strength of the deck is definitely definitely against control and pretty like removal heavy mid-range decks. All right, the opponent with a tapped hollowed fountain to lead. Is it going to be some kind of an esper control? I'm going to bottom this land. I think I'm at risk of flooding out. Nice. All right, drown secrets to the battlefield. Creepy little tentacly things in the sewer. Beneath Ravnica streets runs a layer of tunnels, then caverns and waterways, then terrors and nightmares. So flavory. More blue white? Weird. I've never played against this much blue white control. I know that there's a way that the matchmaking works that it pairs you up against similar decks, but I haven't played another mill deck. So, while our opponent takes this turn, let's see what they've got. It, true story is that the first tournament I ever won, got first place in, was a tournament uh, at my local game store called Hocus Pocus, a place called Petoskey, Michigan. It's not open anymore. And the deck that I played was Blue White Mill. The win conditions were two millstones, and I had four Mitra's Factory in the deck, which is an old creature land. It turned into a 2-2 for one mana. Sinister Sabotage, not too surprising. Opponent bins a negate. And an Omniscience. And a Settle the Wreckage. I think that tells me that they really want land. So I was happy to run this out. We've got to get through the counters sometimes, and I'd prefer that to Fairy Resolve. And they bend a land. This is all very strange. When you bin a negate, I think the message is... Pretty intense. The message is I don't need counter spells, and that's not good. So I'll just use this chemist's insight. Rather than run out to fairy. So in the finals of that other tournament I'm kind of half telling you about, I played against a person I didn't know at the time, but he went on to be one of my best friends, and his name is Adam. And uh haven't talked to him in many years. But we used to go around playing magic all over the Midwest together. Many good times. He competed on the Pro Tour. Uh, I, I got to compete on the Pro Tour. We had, we had good... It, it, was, it was a brotherhood of battle. I also uh, stayed with him for a while at his house in Petoskey. It was nice. I miss him quite a bit. Those, those days look better and better the older you get. Take it from a guy who's getting a little bit older than the rest. Don't tell everyone. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody my age. It'll get to me. At least I still have my hair. One day CGB will show up with no hair and you'll all be like, what happened to this old guy? Anyway, opponent using his Kanta. Sunk and ruining. Ruining, ruining me. There's a negate. How fun. So I think in this case, Especially with his Kanta on turn two, the opponent just kind of gets out really far ahead of us, and I'm not sure how to make it up. We should have a lot of cards to interact with them, but instead, so far, it just hasn't been the case. I may as well keep these. The opponent might run Lyra or something of that nature. I may as well keep them for right now. We'll see how it plays out in the future. They still have to deal with the Drowned Secrets. Attacking their deck, and there goes a Teferi and a Sulphur Falls. So are they hiding Banefire in the deck? It's a good question. Let's fire off an Opt as well and just keep drowning those secrets. What if they just don't have their win cons if we get lucky enough on the mills to fight with fires? That's funky. Well, this is interesting. We can put our opponent in a pinch where we launch the Drowned Secrets and then we launch the Teferi. I'm going to save this land in my hand to conceal that I, that I have the mana for a Teferi. But what's actually better? If our opponent has a Cleansing Nova, another Drowned Secrets is bad. Let's see if they counter this. I think they will. Regardless, we get more triggers. And triggers are great. 
Absorb, okay. And our opponent has the negate as well. And they're trying to leave up mana to use the Iskanta. So we want to prevent that as much as possible. So I am going to run out a Teferi here and make the opponent use the negate so they don't get to Iskanta this turn. Jeebos. What is up with this? We've got Absorbs, Sabotages, and Negates all in this deck. All right. And not a lot of red mana, it appears. The opponent could be using Field of Ruin to get their red mana, but they're not. All right. Or they're just slow rolling it the whole time. Okay. Rawl is strong if it ultimates, but it also might deck the opponent, and it helps deck the opponent, so I'm not sure if that's a bad thing or a good thing for me. Let's go ahead and try and opt. The opponent can't use the, uh, can't use the Iskanta this turn, so we're not letting them run out the negate is bad, so we don't want to give them a good negate target this turn. Giving them more time to find more counters with Rawl is obnoxious, but we want to try to interfere with their ability to use Iskanta to find an answer. Blink of an Eye is great. Blink of an Eye is pretty darn great. Um, we can target the Rawl and just set the opponent back if it tries to ultimate, and we can do that on our opponent's turn as well. So we can waste their mana this turn, or you know the three mana they'd like to use countering something. And I don't mind them activating Rawl here either, but we will blink in response to the activation, I think. 23 cards left in the deck. Here's the activation. Let's try a blink. And a mill. Now part of letting them have that activation is I want them to be activating. And here's the negate. So the opponent is on to the plan. Clear the mind. That would have sucked. I wonder if they have another... That's pretty funny. Often these decks can run two clear the mind, though. Let's see if they've got it. Oh my gosh, that would be so funny. I, I run a mill deck, and it's the one time I run up against a clear the mind. And look at the amount of counters. Look at the absorbs, the negates. Look at the sabotage. This opponent is just so ham about this. Resolves. Let's go. Letting the opponent have their Rawl again. Let them dig. Let them dig. Let's skip to the good we need more cards. Okay. It's pretty good. Minus to draw. We definitely need more action. And now untap two lands. And hitting a blink of an eye there is glorious. If the opponent targets one of these with something like a fight with fire, we can bounce it. 18 cards to go. There's a lightning strike. Let's try it. Sweet. Do you have something for the Teferi? The other Teferi. Card land. 16 to go. Another is Kanta. Great. Now, do I let my opponent have this emblem? They would need to draw 10 cards to kill me, and they have 16 in their deck. Oh, that's a terrible draw. All right, let's try. Let's see if this resolves. My god, infinite counters over here. All right. Let's go after your all. I don't think I can let the emblem go off with that many cards in the deck, but I think now if I make the opponent I think now if I make the opponent get the raw back to ultimate range, it will be low enough. What I'm really wondering is if they have that clear the mind still in the deck. I think if they did, they'd keep digging for it with his Kanta. So that's what I'm holding on to here. If they had a second clear the mind. 
And you're like, CJB, surely one clear the mind is enough. Well, clear the mind doesn't exile itself like many things that shuffle the deck back in. So there are a lot of crazy mad lads out there who want to play two clear the minds and just have an endless deck. Every problem has a solution. Raw returns. sabotage in the graveyard if that's not if that's not the clear of the mind i don't know what is <laughs> we really need an ashiok right here so i'm going to go aggressively for it we need to exile that graveyard you show no time for a break. Oh, didn't get there didn't get there friends We'll see. Maybe the opponent just had a choice of two Sinister Sabotages. Because obviously they run like a million. I have not drawn as many of my mill effects as I need either. I think I've only drawn... Is that three? Three of the eleven? It's kind of crazy. And there's the clear the mind. Ah! Boo! Hiss! No! I told you it was there. They found it. Ashiok did not show up. Hurry. All right, another time Raveler. See if we can resolve it against infinite counter spells over here. No. <laughs> and they have enough mana to activate his Kanta. What an I'm not what a deck. What a what a classy what a classy one we got here. Holy crap. I know, maybe I should make the 4-4, but I don't even want what what I want to do is save it for a trigger. I wanted to save it for a, a drowned secrets trigger. And as Kanta finds what? Nova. That's obnoxious. Good against my enchantments. all going up eventually the opponent will figure out i don't counter spells in any way i don't even play a, like one negate so they'll just fight with fire blow me up nice omniscience they drew right to it now they can uh, play everything for free are they gonna play anything for free no weird let's try this Hmm. Fun. Do I minus on the raw? I, I have to. I don't have a choice here. And now we have to try to get rid of it, so... I don't have enough mana to do both, but... Yeah, if I um, time wipe it now, it will cut right to it, so I can't do that. So I just need to pass for this turn and hope the Drown Secrets survives. Of course, the opponent can dig it back up with his Kanta, unfortunately, and replay it for free. Arr. Oh, they took the Absorb instead, of course. They'd much prefer to counter everything now. Double Rowl, sure. Well, at least if they Nova now, that's not good for them. Hmm. But that Absorb is... My Ashiok isn't going to beat that Absorb. Like, the only thing is I have to get them into a big graveyard where they're like, I'm going to clear the mind, and then the Ashiok has to resolve. That's just not going to happen when they run eight counter spells. Or no, they run ten. Four Sinister Sabotage, four Absorb, two Negate. That is... That is hateful. That is greedy AF.
I'm going to throw the good game here. I think I'll keep the video because it was interesting to see their deck, but now they're tanking really hard, and I can't win. And it could go on for a long time, so I'm going to let it be. Oh, right as the fight with fire comes in. I guess the opponent was spending all that time selecting how to cast fight with fire with kicker with omniscience on the battlefield. All right, we have an early secrets and a late time wipe, so I'll try the hand out. We could definitely bottleneck on mana at three, but I think it's worth a try. Simic Gilgate, okay. Drawing Teferi Time Raveler makes me very happy. Pretty much the spot you want that card. And opponents with the customary growth spiral move, but let's get the Time Raveler on them right away. And there's the Growth Spiral with the Selesnya Gill Gate and, yep, Gates.deck. I'm going to plus it because against Gatebreaker Ram and Gate Colossus, bouncing is very, very effective. Normally I'd just draw the card right away, which is what I do in most situations, because I expect the Teferi to die, but against Gates, they don't always have a good way to kill it. And if we get this on like six, seven, eight loyalty, and then we can just minus to bounce things a few times, that's really solid. Now what's not really solid are these Gate Colossus triggers, which can make us have to mill a lot more, moving the Gate Colossus to the top of the library over and over and over. Let's see if the opponent, the opponent doesn't do it though. That's interesting. All right. We've got the Chemister's Insight, but we can bluff like we have a counter spell for now. The Fairy Time Raveler also can unlock Instant Speed Time Wipe, which anything you can play at instant speed, very, very strong. Main Phase Revitalize because they can't cast them at instant speed. The Fairy shuts that down. A lot of text on these cards that just makes you play magic differently, which it's very important to be reading these new Planeswalkers all the time. All right, are we putting the Colossus on top? We are. Well, Insight will put it right back on the bottom. Or not on the bottom, but back in the graveyard. But it does mean we have to mill the opponent for the same cards over and over. And it looks like we just hit Gates Ablaze. And there is Ashiok, who can fix that problem. Let's plus this. Let's try this. We could also launch Teferi. But Ashiok taking out the graveyard and exiling this Colossus is pretty nice. You know, mass manipulation is a, a serious consideration as well, which is very scary. But I, there's nothing I can do about a mass manipulation, except for blink of an eye getting back my own stuff. Maybe that's what I'm supposed to do then. Not play either Planeswalker, just in case of mass manipulation, draw cards. I think I like that. If that's the plan, I'm going to use an opt right now though. I might see an enchantment or something I wish to play. Another Time Raveler. I mean, that's a decent card. and it, But it can't bounce a Planeswalker if the opponent takes them with Mass Manipulation, which is their main out right now. And I have a Teferi running right now, so I'm going to bottom it. And that's okay, I guess. And we'll save a Chemist's Insight. Rawl. It's a little surprising. I didn't expect Rawl. Gates Planeswalker dot deck. But Gates... Well, that is what Gates sort of is. It's the uh, all the cards I like box for, for players. Plenty of players have their sweet Gates deck. I think it appeals... Like, I think Commander players kind of enjoy it. Because you just get to do big things with powerful, over oversized stuff. Guild Summit, draw an extra cards. That is a good thing. So let's resolve this trigger. So the Colossus goes on top. Then we'll play this Chemister's Insight and put it back in the graveyard so the opponent doesn't get to draw it here. Just make their life a little harder. We'll keep that going up. I think we want to lead with the Secrets. I think Secrets and Chemister's Insight is probably 
the way to keep moving. The Gates deck usually doesn't have a, many good answers to enchantments anyway. Let the opponent have their raw. Let it do all the things raw wants to do. The opponent isn't playing black, so they can't thought erase our hand. So as long as we pace our threats well, we should be okay. And it should be a pretty good matchup. So gate Colossus, put the Colossus on top. Chemistry's Insight, shut that back down. And we'll just keep playing uh, a game of tag with the Gate Colossus. Putting it off, putting it off, putting it off until hopefully we get more in the graveyard and we can exile a bunch with Ashiok. Razor. Yeah, an 3 Gets another gate down. The opponent will get the Colossus out now. We have a time wipe though. We have Teferi as well. Is it... The, the Raw will find the Colossus. Here it is. Revitalize. 24 cards left. Two Colossus. Here we go. It's getting exciting now. So we'll have the instant speed time wipe. So we'll go ahead and plus the Time Raveler. Do we want to play this Teferi and put anything in the deck? I don't think so. We need 5 mana for the Time Wipe, which leaves us only 2 mana available. But maybe we can cast a Warrant Warden first. I like that. Uh, just to get the triggers. Like, we'll wait till the opponent attacks us. We'll Warrant away something. Or we'll target it with Warrant, then respond to our own Warrant with Time Wipe. Just to get the mill triggers from the Drowned Secrets. And then next turn, I think Ashiok Chemister's Insight should be lethal. Especially with the help of Rawl here. Oh boy, here they come. Alright, full control mode. If you want to respond to your own effect, that's very important. Warrant, target, the grazer. Submit. Triggers. You. You. Submit. Alright, and before those resolve, time wipe. More triggers. Yeah, hit them hard. They also run into Fairy Time Raveler in there. Here's another Gate Colossus. And here's another Gate, which can restack the deck. <laughs> the, gate, the, the Colossi just keep on coming. All right, 13 cards left though. This is eight cards. Nine, 10, 11, 12. 13 should be plenty. Might be a bad idea. Maybe plenty is a strong word. Maybe maybe it's a little close for comfort. But I think we're there. It would take some tricky like gross spiral put a Colossus back on top of my deck at instant speed, which the opponent can't do because of the time raveler. Oh, well, there are five left. That's not quite enough. Is there a way to get there? I guess I could draw an opt. If I play Teferi, I need a three mana card to cast. I guess I'm best off just time wiping and making sure that I don't die. I hope the opponent ultimates the Rawl so I can kill them when they cast a spell. <laughs> All right. So we can't play this at instant speed because we didn't plus the Teferi if you're curious. But we're planning to do the Chemistry's Insight thing. There's the minus. Sweet. In response, We'll empty the deck so that the raw trigger kills our opponent.
Oh, I think it's just instant or sorcery. Darn it. Darn it. It's just instant or sorcery. Darn it. Okay, the opponent, they're going to go down in a blaze. <laughs> going down in flames. Props, opponent. Good game. Can't get there. Tried to get the get there with the emote, but that's it. Thank you for watching this video with the Ashiok mill deck, Planeswalker mill deck. Lots of Teferis, lots of Ashioks, and just turbo milling the opponent. Gives me a great feeling of satisfaction when it works. And the deck has a higher success rate than it did before Ashiok. It was something I tried out, but Ashiok definitely adds another dimension to it. Maybe there's something to refine here and get a few more wins, but I do think it lives in jank tank territory. Have fun with the deck. Don't try to be too competitive, I would say. But who knows? Maybe there's something I'm missing. Let me know in chat what I'm missing. Chat. Twitch. Twitch habits, my friends. Let me know in comments what I'm missing. And thank you for watching this video. And as always, I will see you in the next video. If Goodbye. you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment. You can also support the channel on Patreon for special perks. Links are in the description. Our sponsors are hauntedflower.com and flipsidegaming.com. Haunted Flower sells officially licensed MTG apparel and accessories, and Flipside Gaming sells MTG cards and supplies. You can save 10% on either site with the promo code CGB, and it supports the channel at the same time. See you next time for another day in the arena. For now, it's me, it's CGB, signing out.